Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everybody uh, based on where you're joining from. Uh, welcome to the webinar, Securing Application Performance with Global Server Load Balancing and New Core Network Services. I am thrilled to have uh, on this webinar the following panelists. Let me first introduce Rohit Mehra, who is the Vice President of Network Infrastructure at IDC. He provides expert insight and analysis into global industry and technology trends as they relate to the enterprise, data center, cloud, and telecom networks, including areas such as Ethernet switching, routing, wireless applications, delivery, WAN optimization, among other technologies. Rohit, it's an honor to have you on this panel. Let me also sure, welcome. Let me also welcome Paul Rika. Uh, Paul manages network infrastructure at a large global law firm with offices in almost 20 countries. No small task in an environment that relies on constant and always available networks. Constant change in all of, always available networks to ensure that they can conduct business effectively. Paul has been in the networking industry for almost 20 years. Paul, uh, thank you for taking the time to be on this panel, to share your perspective, and for being a valuable Infobox customer. And I know you've made this uh, call despite some very, challenge, uh, very challenging morning, so thank you. Finally, I'm Prakash Nagpal, Vice President of Product Marketing at Infoblox. I have been at Infoblox about two years, and I've been in the networking and security space for 20 plus years. The agenda for today is as follows. We're going to start with Rohit providing an industry perspective. Paul will talk about how these trends have become personal to his experience, and I will cover how Infoblox is helping customers navigate the changing digital world. Of course, we will try to save time at the end for my favorite part, which is time to answer questions. You can also post your questions in the Q&A panel at the bottom of your screen, on the bottom left of your screen, and we will try to answer some of these questions uh, as the webinar is ongoing. Rohit, let's start with you. Please tell us where we are, uh, what we can expect, not in some kind of metaphysical way, but in the context of digitization and networking. Rohit, over to you. Great. Thank you uh, for this very generous introduction, Prakash. And uh, as Prakash said, good morning, good afternoon. Um, depending on where you are, uh, we really are happy to have you join and listen from, you know, three different folks coming from different backgrounds and having different perspectives. So we hope this will be very valuable for you um, in, in your jobs um, as IT professionals. So I want to start uh, by just walking through maybe a few very high-level items, and hopefully they'll resonate and very quickly drill down to some of the more day-to-day -day operational aspects and how they apply to you and potentially how you can benefit from this tr uh, transformation that is currently ongoing in the IT industry. So um, I want to start with, uh, you know, talk about what IDC calls IT's uh, third platform, you know, first one being, you know, mainframe and then client server. Some of us have lived through those challenging years over the last uh, few decades. But currently what we see at IDC is we are in the era of the third platform, uh, which is really as its foundation comes with mobility and cloud, big data analytics and social, right? Um, and now what we've started to do, and we've been seeing this for the last few years, um, and while we've started to now drill this into actually three phases of cloud and mobility. The first phase, phase started about a decade ago, and we call that the experimental phase. And, and we had IT folks spearheading a lot of this, some trying out cloud, some building their own cloud, you know, as in private cloud or hosted private cloud and looking at all the pros and cons and how do I deliver applications and services in that manner. It was somewhat ad hoc, if you will. 
And then we moved to this other phase very recently in the last few years, um, and what we've called this multiplied innovation, where you're starting to feel the need, okay, this is carrying momentum, building momentum, and I need to multiply the innovation that I've made in the area of cloud and mobility, and I want to be able to use uh, big data analytics into a, a larger number of my applications and how I deliver that user experience, right? It's certainly from a scale up, scale out, standpoint and interesting phase that we are in. And finally, what we, are, what we at IDC see us going towards is this area of what we call autonomy. And of course, we've heard about, we all talk about self-driving cars and um, automation and robotics in various aspects of our personal and professional lives. But in this case, I am talking about IT as a whole, thinking very largely around moving towards autonomy, whether it's your applications, whether it's your infrastructure, and it doesn't matter where you are, and it doesn't matter where your applications are being consumed, the question is around how much automation can be built into your uh, resources. So hold that thought. We'll come back to autonomy. I'm sure we'll be discussing it um, m multiple times during this conversation today. Um, I also, moving along, I want to share with you what we see as the changing and evolving role of IT. Uh, certainly not an envious task. And for those um, of you, you know, IT professionals, IT managers, CIOs who are listening in today, um, you, will, you will align, you will relate to what I'm seeing. While we talk in our day-to-day -day lives around building more simplicity and finding it easier to consume IT resources and services, the point is um, the job has become a more, lot more complex, and the network by extension has become a lot more complex. And if you just look at this chart, on the left, we're talking about internal services vis-a-vis -vis IT and the business. And you think about, you know, everything that you need to do, how you want to connect to the different resources that are available internally within the organizations, and what kind of connectivity you have. And then take all of that around your integration and orchestration capabilities that you have within your IT, you know, group. Uh, look at the developer services you are offering, and then take it to the right of this chart, as is being shown here, an external view of the organization. So we're talking about how you engage, how you know businesses engage, present themselves, attract new customers, and of course, IT increasingly plays an, a significant role in many of these business developments. And of course, the, the ecosystem engagements continue to increase uh, with service providers playing a role, with security solution vendors playing a role as you build your full support infrastructure. So by any means, yes, the consumption side, you want to make it simpler. The application alignment and application experience, you want it to be simpler and user-friendly, but the back-end complexity isn't going away. Right, so that is a key aspect of what I want to talk about. How do how do IT managers battle this increased complexity and make their lives simpler? And, and of course, as we mentioned, automation is one of those areas, but there are others as well. So I want to talk a little bit about, you know, what are IT folks thinking? Right, we I'm sharing the survey data uh, from a recent survey we did where we asked them about. Um, IT areas and where uh, were the largest investments being made by IT uh, with these enterprise IT professionals in response to the ongoing digital transformation initiatives within their organization. And you'll see, as with many other surveys, uh, you know, uh, cyber threats, security threats, vulnerabilities are always, almost always um, by default in some cases. Um, we don't want to take it for granted, but yes, it is an important aspect from a security standpoint. But if you unpeel the onion a little more, beyond security, uh, what IT folks are thinking about as far as their own investments are concerned are around infrastructure, whether it's uh, data center, networking, whether it's 
um, you know, other aspects of compute, but even organizational standpoint as well, right? Um, and then beyond that, when we start thinking about applications and data, mobility, which is still a key part of what, you know, remember I called it the third platform, mobility and cloud is are foundational pillars of that third platform. So the investments are going on in mobility and, of course, building more applications, many, many custom applications as well. So with that, I'll, I'll, the other aspect I'll talk about today, uh, we, we talk about cloud data center. We've been doing this for a long time. I also want to introduce this concept, uh, which is an emerging trend that we are seeing, which is uh, somewhat more recent over the last couple of years, is what's happening uh, with the intelligent edge. Some folks may want to call it the IoT edge, but it's not necessarily just linked to IoT, right? This could be your enterprise branch. Um, it could be a you know a set of clinics uh, in a large hospital system. Um, it, it could be manufacturing plants, and each and every plant becomes the edge from that standpoint. Um, uh, and, and same way, you know, you can extend this to multiple industries. It could be a retail store if you are looking at a large chain of retail stores. So why does networking matter? from an intelligent edge standpoint, because not only are you providing essential connectivity at the edge, that includes, by the way, security services, you are also looking at optimizing application and service performance. And a lot of the innovations around the network in recent years actually have been more focused towards the edge. So, so yes, cloud build-out was important and will stay very, very important from a core services standpoint. But the edge, I, I would say, uh, is almost as important as we move, move forward for this next era of IT. And looking at networking, for those of you who are network savvy and network managers on this uh, presentation, you know, a lot of the changes that we've seen in the industry and the innovation has, that has gone in those changes, uh, like software defined, overlay infrastructures, um, NFV and network function virtualization, security. Security and network couldn't be more strongly aligned with each other um, than they are today because just because, you know, the perimeter now is no longer that one physical perimeter that we all used to think about. We had a firewall and then once you got in, you got in, right? Uh, we need to be thinking more holistically about security, and we'll, we'll cover that in a little more. Um, so why are we doing all this? Because at the end of the day, the network is closely aligned to broader IT goals, and then the IT goals, of course, are relating to better business outcomes. So those relationships couldn't be closer. So from a, when we, now that we've talked about edge and shown you, you know, the importance or the increasing relevance, let's come back to cloud, which again is absolutely key. And I think I've seen this picture and I've used it for the last couple of years, but I think nothing can show this more simply in terms of the relevance of the edge at, on the right hand side, but then how you need cloud connectivity and the network to facilitate and that cloud connectivity very, very seamlessly. So it doesn't matter what industry you're from, whether it's healthcare, education, manufacturing, et cetera. The key is we're all living in this multi-cloud world and you need to access multiple cloud resources. In some cases, yes, added complexity, but added lack of visibility as well because now what you're consuming gets actually served from a data center in a public cloud pr provider over which you may have only limited control. So keep that in mind, uh, you know, the need for more analytics, the need for more visibility, and the intelligence that you can get from your network. Every piece of that intelligence adds to the data points that will ultimately provide you with more analytics and hence more intelligence to, to do your day-to-day -day jobs and to automate your day-to-day -day jobs. So I've tried to keep it simple, but I think hopefully that's driving home the point. A cloud has to be linked to the edge, but then we need to look at it more holistically to provide that network intelligence.
So I want to share one more data uh, point or set of data points from another survey. This was our um, uh, uh, an SDN survey that we did, and we asked folks, um, IT folks like yourselves, what is your primary motivation or which of these factors are your primary motivations for considering software-defined networking? And we've said it generically, software-defined networking also means, you know, in this day and age, uh, many different things, all the way from the data center to the edge. But you can see from the response, um, IT folks and network managers are looking for increased network agility. They are supporting virtualized applications, but they want the network to go along. They want that increased automation and programmability to, so that they can support their private cloud efforts in addition to public cloud. And then from a security standpoint, and I'll, I'll just cover the three here, um, you are thinking about how do I use tools such as micro-segmentation to ensure my applications are secure? And even if there were some vulnerability, I can localize or compartmentalize those issues and, and resolve them in that manner rather, rather than having broad-based security vulnerabilities. So, you know, and I believe this, um, if I'm not mistaken, the slides will be made available to all of you attending. So if you want to look at some more, you know, details uh, behind these surveys, uh, you'll be able to do that at your leisure as well. So I want to switch, uh, you know, given you the full, you know, the thousand foot kind of view of what is happening with cloud, with digital transformation, and how some of those initiatives are becoming imperatives for networks networking and security, I want to go a little bit deeper for a couple of minutes before we, you know, um, add some of the context and um, uh, feedback from um, our colleagues on this uh, presentation. I'm going to talk about where we stand vis-a-vis -vis DDI. And DDI, which most of you know, stands, you know, that's the acronym we've used in the industry for DHCP, DNS, and IPAM, and I, I have to assume, given you folks have joined this webinar today, you're very familiar with those set of core network services um, and certainly very relevant services that the industry have been using and network managers know and live by on, in their day-to-day -day jobs. What we are seeing the industry move towards is an enhanced layer of capabilities that are network and security-centric but really add additional capabilities to your core DDI functions. And I, yeah, I'll just briefly narrate them to you, and I know that Prakash and even Paul will be talking about some of that in the coming minutes. Uh, the first one is around reporting and analytics. And by the way, this capability, of enhanced capability of DDI, jives nicely with the broader trend that we are seeing for increased visibility, increased analytics, to all traffic in your enterprise. You want to be able to get that full end-to-end -end view of what's happening on your network, and you don't want any black holes. So I think that's one key area. The other one is around DNS traffic control. And again, that's a term that I know the InfoBlock uh, uh, likes to use, but it, it's certainly a good term representative of a global server load balancing, and I'll talk a little more about that as well. But essentially, we look at this as a tool that really helps improve the broader application experience. You know, if application ex performance improves, your response times improve, the user goes away happy. It doesn't matter if this is an internal user or an external user, your user experience absolutely improves. And let's, let's switch to the security aspect. Uh, we've seen a, a world uh, that we live in where over the last few years we've seen multiple attacks that have leveraged DNS vulnerabilities. So if you think about advanced DNS protection, that's another area that can help protect against a wide range of new and evolving DNS attacks. And I won't go into some of those details. I'm sure Prakash would like to also talk about them, but I'm sure you've heard of some of these and you are always looking for solutions to really build up a stronger defense against many of these vulnerabilities and attacks. And the last one on this slide is around active trust. Uh, we're, we're looking, we're living in a world where, you know, um, the increased possibility of cyber threats continues to increase. And then many of these are perpetrated by 
and new pieces or new types of malware, uh, ransomware, etc., cetera, um, which we, you know, may or may not have been there a year ago or two years ago. So while the industry broadly needs to innovate and many security providers, solution providers continue to be best of breed and will innovate, we need to be thinking in a broader ecosystem view where each of your network and security solutions works with a set of third parties to ensure you get the full 360 degrees view on how to secure your infrastructure and your applications. So one area beyond uh, DDI functionality uh, in terms of you know, the enhanced core DDI services that I talked about is this area of load balancing. Um, now, we're all familiar with load balancers and what happens within a data center. Uh, you're certainly wanting to look at you know, solutions like application delivery controllers uh, but you also want to be thinking about a lot of other capabilities to improve the application experience. Um, and this could be, you know, within your own private cloud or even in a non-cloud environment. If you are running traditional applications, leg legacy applications within a hosted data center, you still want to be able to provide some level of application-centric load balancing. Right. Um, the other emerging area that we've seen is what we refer to in the industry as global server load balancing, and that's you know that's the um, uh, the point around distribution of traffic across server resources that actually might span across multiple data centers, multiple geographies. As we know, the world is becoming smaller and smaller vis-a-vis -vis IT, and you might have someone consuming your IT applications and resources in one region or one continent, uh, but the actual delivery of those applications might be from a different continent, right? So if we start thinking around those types of scenarios, um, irrespective of whether it's a multi-cloud or a private cloud deployment, I, I think the need for global server load balancing um, continues to increase. And one of the solutions um, that uh, Prakash will talk about a little more in more in depth from an info block standpoint is that need to deliver that kind of load balancing capability that enhances the less, rest of your IT uh, services and capabilities. So with, with that, um, uh, Prakash, I'll hand it uh, back to you. Rohit, thank you. Thank you for taking us on that journey from how the world is changing to making it more personal to an enterprise on what they sh could do differently to manage this changing world. So let, let me turn to the audience and ask you, what is important to you? What do you look at as being your priorities over the next 12 to 24 months? And I'll give uh, people a few couple of minutes to respond. Let's see the results. Uh, what is important to our audience? The ability to support uh, network security and visibility seems to be the clear winner, uh, closely followed by application availability and performance. R Rohit, does any of this surprise you from an industry perspective uh, as to what is important? Uh, no, it doesn't. Uh, I, I have to say. <laughs> Uh, kudos to that this audience today, Prakash. They're right on the money here. I mean, I, I think we're seeing clearly t a top three emerge, um, but I would say even the top two that we are talking about, the security and visibility a aspects, I couldn't agree more. Um, that that's a, a need that we are seeing, as I mentioned earlier, you know, with cloud, um, the need for visibility, end-to-end -end visibility, all the way from your private cloud, your corporate data centers to the edge, back into the public cloud is becoming very, very important. And so is the need for optimizing the application and user performance. So um, right on the money. Excellent. Thank you. So uh, 
I'm, I'm going to move uh, from an industry perspective. Uh, Rohit started making personal f or as to how it applies to a to an enterprise or a agency or a anybody that's operating a network. So I'm going to turn it over to Paul. Paul, please give us your experience and how this was personal to you, how um, the, the firm that you're working for navigated this change. I'm going to turn it over to you, Paul. Thank you, Kash. <clears throat> as, as I was introduced originally, <clears throat> excuse me, I work for a large law firm for Global. Um, our firm requires our network to be up all, all the time. You know, our lawyers, you know, are constantly working on cases around the clock. Um, <clears throat> so we were looking for solutions that would provide, um, you know, the uptime that we were looking for in the security we were looking for. We had some, you know, initial challenges. Um, <clears throat> when I first came to the firm, um, we had a Microsoft uh, DNS solution, and I <clears throat> and that wasn't really in DHCP, um, and that wasn't quite me meeting the firm's needs. We were looking for the high availability, the scalability, um, and the reliability. So we started to investigate um, you know, solutions that were around there and something that would scale as the firm grew. When I started, there was five locations. We've got 13 locations around the world today. Um, so we need something that would easily scale. The, the Microsoft solution we had originally for DHCP, we had we had split scopes. So if you uh, if one DHCP server failed, you actually got a whole different IP address range. So that didn't work out too well during midstream when you were renewing your leases. Um, <clears throat> and we need something that was you know essentially managed and also qu uh, quick to make changes. With the Microsoft solution, you had to wait for uh, AD to synchronize, et cetera, et cetera. We needed something that was fast acting because we needed to be very uh, nimble. Um, <clears throat> and you know, at the time, we weren't looking at security or um, uh, worked a little, little bit of visibility. We wanted to understand who was getting um, the, the DACP leases, see our DNS records a little bit better. But we hadn't really looked into security or um, global service load balancing at, at the time. But as things progressed, we started to come to realize we really had those needs um, as the security uh, security posture of the world was changing and new threats were uh, uh, coming into play. Um, some of the challenges that we had, you know, we'd, we'd get um, stale or bad DNS records. You know, clients would move from one subnet to another. Microsoft wouldn't change the DNS record. You were relying on the, the uh, client to, to make the change. Um, we really didn't have a lot of visibility into the DNS or DHCP. We couldn't really see how we were, if we were um, exhausting our DHCP scopes. Um, as I mentioned, the propagation around the world was slower than we, we really needed. Um, and you know, we were looking for solutions that would uh, provide those capability. Um, again, as time went on, we uh, set up a disaster recovery data center and we needed to be able to uh, change DNS records when we failed over. Today, if, you know, today, uh, uh, well, prior to, the, you know, having the, the uh, Infoblox DTC, we would have had to change, you know, over a thousand DNS records in the event we had a fail from our primary to our secondary data center or disaster recovery data center. Um, and, uh, you know, we also had, uh, um, you know, security concerns as well, but, um, one of the solutions we were looking at for to say focus back on the load balancing side was um, you know how to be able to do that and we looked at some other products that would allow us to do this uh, the same almost the same thing as DTC was doing but in a very uh, kludgy way there was a lot of um, uh, subdomains to build and uh, configurations to be able to um, advertise that DNS record in uh, be able to have it automatically fail over to it. But be able to, to uh, come and take a look at the, the info block solution, the DTC, and it really, really came up with a, an elegant solution. Um, I'm losing the sl slides here. 
So we also looked at security. You know, as um, security started to come into uh, into play, we were concerned about uh, um, di- different ways of getting data out of the firm. You know, exfiltration, as it's called. Um, and also uh, SSH tunneling out through DNS. Those were, we didn't have visibility with with those things that we realized with our existing security tools. So you know, looking at some of the offerings from uh, Infoblox, they were one of the, the uh, first players I saw that had the ability to examine the DNS queries that were being done, and seeing you know methods of, of X, you know getting data out of the forum. And we were blocking FTP and you know, the box.coms and all those things to be able to, to prevent some of those things and some of the protocols. But DNS was kind of under the radar. Um, so looking at things like uh, Active Trust um, and the Threat Insight, we're able to see that, you know, there was solutions out there to be able to meet that security need. And again, being a large law firm, security is a very big uh, priority for us. You know, we have very privileged and uh, confidential information from our customers. We want to make sure that, you know, we're providing the customers the level of service that they deserve. We want to keep our rep- reputation well. <laughs> um, we don't need to be in the news about um, security. And given the visibility of our, our security, uh, DNS security within Infoblox gives us a huge benefit. So we can see if there are any threats, anything that's happening um, that we need to take action for. Um, and the system will also block things for us as well if there's um, some bad things. We are also able to integrate it to our other existing uh, security solutions. So those systems, when they detect uh, something bad happening, they can automatically send, you know, send updates to Infoblox, and that creates DNS records that are automatically blocked. So we're blocked right at the, you know, the DNS resolution. So you start, you're blocking it really early in the game, which was a, a huge benefit for us. Um, and again, with um, the dynamic traffic control, you know, our goal was, you know, uh, 100% uptime if we can for our, our clients and our, our uh, partners, our lawyers, our secretaries, you know, everyone that, that functions within the firm. And uh, the, the, the DTC provides a very elegant, um, nice solution for that. We were looking for... Um, something to, you know, manage our IP addressing, provide the load balancing, give us visibility. A big thing for us was, you know, the single pane of glass. We're not managing multiple appliances or multiple vendor products to do that. Um, We've looked at other solutions, as I mentioned, and they were very expensive to deploy. It would have kind of gotten me to my goal, but in a very difficult way. The Infoblox, it was very easy to license, uh, configure, and much less expensive. Um, than some of the other solutions I was looking at. So from you know my firm's point of view, um, we we found something that was you know very easy to manage, easy to deploy, uh, uh, cost effective to deploy. Um, it was very easy for me to sell it to the firm, um, and by integrating it into you know having DHCP and the DNS and the IPM together with the dynamic traffic control, I've got all the visibility I will ever need to be able to provide that solution. Um, you also have very uh, great visibility on the records you create. So when you create a DTC record, you can really easily see what record that is, what records belong to that, you know, what, what uh, uh, servers or other, um, other devices that are uh, using that DNS record. Um, it also gives me stability because the DTC actually lives on each Infoblox appliance that's deployed around the world. We put in high availability pair everywhere. So, you know, we're confident we get 100% uptime um, and we're locally delivering those DTC records. So at each local office, it's doing the, the query to see which server is a vi- visible at that office. So it gives us that extra layer. Um, also, to, you know, future looking, we're looking to use the API capabilities and automate uh, the correct uh, creation of our DNS IPM uh, records um, through uh, our tool that also creates our VMware service. And that tool will also create, um, our goal is to ultimately have that create the DTC records as well. 
and then also tear them down once we uh, retire those servers. Um, so have total end-to-end -end, uh, capability. Um, I went too quickly on that slide. So that's you know it, that's that's a quick re recap of you know where my firm is headed. Um, so, uh, gosh, I'll, I'll hand it over to you. Thank you, Paul. Thank you for sharing your experience and the journey you took uh, your company through. So uh, since Paul ended on DTC, uh, then I wanted to turn it back to the audience and go, how are you thinking about application load balancing and global server load balancing? Um, how are you addressing this need today? And I'll give everybody about 60 seconds to respond. I guess silence on the phone is uh, the new version of interaction in a virtual environment. Uh, but we thank you for your participation. All right, so let's look at the results. Uh, you, most companies have implemented something. Obviously, shows that this is an important area for our customer base and the prospects. Um, this is important for them, and uh, the need is being addressed in some fashion. Uh, about 15% have a solution, but uh, might not, it might not be meeting all their needs. Uh, great. So, so I'm going to transition over to InfoBlocks and what we are doing to meet this next generation, this evol evolving uh, network, this evolving business and how we meet the needs. Uh, as Rohit pointed out, addressing this emerging need uh, is, goes beyond core DDI. Now, I, I should start with giving credit where credit is due. I stole this content, well, actually I guess the right word is borrowed this content from Rohit and IDC, where they espouse the concept of simplicity a simple approach to meeting the needs of the modern digital enterprise. We at InfoBlocks talk about starting at the foundation and keeping it simple by starting addressing the very basic needs. There are three components to this. Increasing operational efficiency by automating basic tasks, creating policies that can be applied broadly and uniformly across the infrastructure. Some of the things that Paul talked about, you know, the challenges that they were having about changing thousands of records and how do you do it more efficiently. The second component is about the ease of, ease of consumption and deployment to address the needs of this complex network with a solution that's agnostic to the complexity and shields the user from this complexity. You know, I know Rohit touched on everybody migrating to the, to the public cloud and Paul touched on the complexity of the network. Uh, the, this efficiency and ease of use cannot come at the expense of handling uh, this complex infrastructure. The solution must be able to address the challenges of the new technology uh, that the new technology is creating. The solution must handle the cloud environment. It should be able to augment human beings and address the challenges in availability of expertise in this ever-expanding uni universe of technologies. It must automate the management of the new complexity without significantly increasing budgets or adding a lot of people. Yes, IT budgets are increasing, but maybe we should have, have had a polling question here. Uh, how many of you on, on, on the line or on this webinar are told, well, here's a new project, and by the way, you get 20 more people. If you are, you are unique in uh, in the way your your enterprise handles the situation. But major because majority of the companies that we talk to, and at least I talk to, are being asked to do 
more with less or with whatever they with the resources that they currently have. So what is Infoblox doing to deliver on this promise of simplicity? Um, to, uh, to deliver on the simplicity and allow organizations to start from the basics, Infoblox suggests that they start with a set of products. We call it the core bundle because it addresses the core of the network and it goes beyond that uh, just DDI, right, like Rohit talked about. And we believe that this core set of products will meet the needs of the modern digital enterprise and deliver the key benefits that I talked about, providing a mechanism to ensure that your network, which is the core of the modern business, is able to always deliver the applications and services that your customers, both internal and external, are demanding, and making sure that they are always consistent, reliable, and available. To ensure that the experience of the users and the applications that they use can be optimized, well, in addition to availability, to we are offering products that allow this application availability to be optimized, providing the security both in maintaining the integrity of your network and protecting users and data. The bundle is also designed to provide you visibility into what's on your network how your network is being utilized, and provide early insight into any malicious and anomalous activity. So let me spend a little bit of time diving into each of the components of this bundle. While ensuring uptime is the ultimate goal, the mechanism to provide this benefit must be efficient. Central to this is having a robust DDI platform which can provide the efficiencies by automation, with automation of repeatable tasks, moving away from managing information with spreadsheets to a more robust mechanism that can provide the most current and updated information about the state of your network without human intervention. The solution provided by Infoblox works across a broad array of platforms, your public cloud, your virtualized environment, your private cloud environment, a traditional server-based environment, or a combination of any of these or all of these. Infobox Core DDI platform uh, is designed to keep pace with the changes in the environment. Whether you expand or add a vendor, replace a vendor, Infoblox can integrate with your existing workflow engine and other key technologies to provide you with this automation and efficiency we've been talking about. Infoblox's solution is built on our patented grid technology that allows you to deploy our products across multiple sites in a geographically distributed environment, supporting the failover and uh, redundancy required to support this modern distributed business or enterprise or a, um, or organization. Infoblox is the market share leader in this space with over 50% market share with over 7,000 customers and about 90% of the Fortune 100 uh, customers are in our customer base. We are unique in the breadth of the platforms we support and integrate with. So whether your environment includes Microsoft, Amazon, Cisco, VMware, or others, we have out-of-the-box out of integrations with them. Our solutions can help regardless of where you are in the technology adoption curve, whether you are currently virtualizing your environment, migrating to the public cloud, adopting containers, or in the midst of adopting SDN technology that Rohit talked about earlier. We live in an application economy. We talked a little bit about uh, earlier about applications being the key and being able to deliver um, applications. And as you provided feedback, several of you are interested or are addressing application availability. In our situation, ensuring op our products allow you to deliver optimal access to your applications that are critical to your business. making sure your applications are always available, uh, 
in, under normal circumstances, in the event of a failure, or when you're trying to optimize your user experience. The routing of application traffic is made possible with a solution we call DNS Traffic Control, or DTC, that we talked about before. Infoblox allows you to route this traffic based on a variety of criteria, ranging from the basic, uh, like GOIP, to a more sophisticated set of rules that can leverage what we call extensible attributes or additional parameters that drive the logic on where you want to send the traffic. Our solution can maximize application availability with DNS host checks and seamless failover. It provides application performance by leveraging industry standard load balancing algorithms, keyword screen scrapes, SNMP and HTTP, HTTPS, health checks. You can learn more about the benefits of using this approach for global server load balancing uh, that using the Infoblox approach uh, versus others. I know Rohit covered it a little bit, but there's also a white paper that we can share at the end of this broadcast where you can read more. As Rohit pointed out, and as you provided feedback during this, the new DDR, the new bundle, requires a core element of security. Security is a broad topic, so let me get more focused on what Infoblox means when we say security. I'm referring to the ability to protect your infrastructure, which means ensuring that it is not a victim of attack that can impact its ability to deliver the applications and services your customers need, specifically protection against DNS-based DDoS attacks. We can do this with a product we call Advanced DNS Protection, or ADP. In the Infoblox context, security also includes the ability to protect your data and prevent the spread of malware. Rohit talked about this ever-changing environment where malware is uh, constantly evolving, the way people extract data from your networks is con constantly evolving, and Infoblox's solution has the ability to look deep in the, into your DNS traffic, a capability that most other security tools are not designed to handle, and detect when DNS is being used to uh, exfiltrate data from your network. Obviously, malware uses DNS at several parts in its kill chain, and Infoblox's products are designed to detect that use and prevent your infrastructure from accessing that, or, or prevent malware that might be on your uh, network from accessing that those malicious sites. This bundle of products we call uh, Active Trust. In addition to providing the ability to protect against the spread of malware, Infoblox also believes in uh, making sure that this intelligence that we have, have can be shared across your entire infrastructure. Uh, making sure that we can share indicators of compromise that we detect across every part of your infrastructure, whether it's a SIM, a NAC, a vulnerability scanner, endpoint protection systems, and more. We also include an active trust and investigation tool that allows you to better understand the source of the threats uh, and take more informed corrective action. Obviously, these products can be consumed in a physical or virtual appliance or completely in the cloud. The Rohit stressed visibility, and uh, Paul talked about making sure they knew everything that they had in the network. So the last component of this bundle is our reporting and analytics solution that allows you to continuously observe what's happening on your network, do historical analysis, and provide, a, provide the ability to identify problems you might face. The information is used to monitor network activity, troubleshoot network issues, and predict when you might need additional capacity on your network. For example, if you're planning an expansion in a certain region, ensuring that you have enough IP addresses to support the growth in that region before it becomes a crisis is important, and we allow you the ability to do that. The same tool can be used to examine your DNS traffic to identify the who, what, when, where associated with threats, so you can categorize them and prioritize them. We've covered a lot of ground, so let me go back to where I started. Our goal is to try and make your network and therefore your business prepared to navigate the digital transformation. 
in order to make that easy, we have created this bundle and recommended a set of products that are in a package that's easy to consume and can meet your needs of operational efficiency, ease of use and management, and ensure network availability, um, provide security, and del deliver continuous visibility into your network. The products can be delivered as physical appliance, virtual appliances, and for those of you who have moved to um, a cloud-based model, our security products are available completely in the cloud. This gives you the ability to, the flexibility to deploy your products in a manner that suits your IT directives. And Infoblox allows you to purchase these product, products in a perpetual license or a subscription model. A combination of capabilities, consumption, and cost, uh, this combination of capabilities, consumption model, flexibility, and cost make, is what makes doing business with Infoblox simple. We've covered a lot of ground, and I'm sure that after 20-something slides, all of you are just hungry for more slides. This is the point when you take, everything, uh, take yourself off of mute and you say, that's funny, uh, so thank you. Uh, let me go back to Rohit. Rohit, before we conclude, I, w we've covered a lot of ground, so how would you summarize what customers should do? What are your three or four takeaways? Sure, Prakash, that, that's a great question. After such a, and I was listening to you, listening to Paul, uh, I, I think this webinar and on this webinar we have tried to provide a overview of some of the aspects uh, that maybe may seem, uh, you know, um, pretty standard when it comes to DDI type capabilities. But I, I think um, the issues uh, as they relate to network automation, visibility, analytics, security—I I can go on and on. Um, they're pretty important. These are not mundane tasks. These are, you know, in the in the day-to-day -day operational life of an IT manager all the way to a CIO. These are pretty significant tasks because now you're talking about mission critical, you know, applications and infrastructure implications. So, absolutely. So, a few quick takeaways from my standpoint, uh, you know, the pace of change has rapidly accelerated in and, and I think you, you all can relate to this in your daily personal lives, in your family lives. I mean, we all have teenagers, or at least some of us do. <laughs> we know how quickly things change with them, right? And this, from an enterprise perspective, the point around digital transformation, absolutely, you need to be a responsive IT organization to be addressing DX goals. The second aspect um, in, in terms of takeaways, as Prakash mentioned, would be that some of this digital transformation requires changing in mod business models, applications, and infrastructure, which to a large extent rely on the networking and security services that many of us think of as enabling. They may not seem like the core technologies, but absolutely they are big enablers in today's world. Um, and then, you know, from an enabler of transformation, the more IT can leverage their own assets to support digital innovation when it comes to digital performance, digital innovation, and overall digital transformation to support the needs and the evolution of the business itself, um, how do you ab are able to do this to optimize your applications is a number one priority of digital transformation and IT transformation. And then from that perspective, going down to the final layer, you know, I would say in today's context for this webinar and the topics that we have covered, um, I, I would say, you know, look, you know, yes, we might take DDI for granted, but I would say it is a core mission critical service, but also in the state of, you know, as far as the state of the technology is concerned, I think we're moving beyond core functions, um, the, or rather I would say the traditional functions of DDI. And we are looking in, in, and leveraging DDI for areas like visibility and analytics, which I said earlier, 
and I think you've heard that multiple times, has become a key aspect and directly related to the security tools and initiative you may have going on within your organization. And, and of course, um, you know, I, I couldn't talk more about global server, uh, server load balancing because um, how you deliver applications has become key from the cloud. So from that standpoint, I think these are my takeaways, some very high level, Prakash, hopefully they resonate, but some very, very much down in the trenches which impact the life of any network operator. Back to you. Prakash. Thank you, Rohit. Thank you for summarizing it and then bringing it home. Um, so as, as we uh, close out, uh, obviously, we want to get your feedback while we go ahead and see if there are any questions that we can answer. Um, Paul, do you do you have a perspective on the takeaways that Rohit? What advice would you have uh, for customers on the line uh, on how to address these needs? What would be your takeaways? Well, um, <clears throat> again, I think many of their needs are my needs as well. I mean, you know, security has, has bubbled up to the top, you know, from, from when I first started in this industry. Um, but, you know, another, you know, high priority for me as well is, is application availability. You know, I need five nines or better. I need, you know, 100% uptime for my DDI infrastructure. I need the visibility. Um, <clears throat> I need the flexibility. I need to partner with a company that is innovative in moving forward and adding, you know, functions and features like these things. Um, so, you know, I think, you know, any company that's got a um, needs like this or has a um, uh, additional data centers that they want to be able to fail over their systems, you know, you can use these tools to automate a lot of this stuff. You can use these tools to see what's going on in the environment to make sure that you are, you know, as secure as, secure as you're po possible. And, you know, I can't take chances with my, my core technologies, my core DNS, DHCP. If that's down, my whole firm's down. And that won't be acceptable for my CIO. Um, and I don't need the added grief of, of trying to, you know, get an environment like that back up and running. So, you know, I think the security and availability are, are key essential um, points of view or needs in the business. You know, I think as companies are also moving out towards uh, the cloud have you know to be able to extend that solution out there is you know key as well. Thank you. So maybe this time for uh, one more question, um, Rohit. We've talked a lot about visibility. Can you get a little more specific for us on what does this visibility mean? What should this visibility include? Yes. Um... I think I think that's a great question. I, I alluded to this in some of my conversation. I think Paul's talked about it as well. Um, for us, um, visibility is step one. When we start talking about analytics, we start talking about big data and leveraging big data um, on the lines of what we are seeing in the industry vis-a-vis -vis machine learning and you know artificial intelligence. If you have uh, rock solid data that you can get insights from, whether it's your network, whether it's your servers, whether it's your applications. And again, I'm talking cloud to edge. It doesn't matter where it is. You know, the the point or the place across the spectrum, across your IT infrastructure and the network, it doesn't matter. But that visibility is going to be key and foundational to that intelligence that you want to create as a resource for building more network automation. So from our standpoint, you know, if you look at how cloud services are being consumed, think about all the SaaS applications you might be starting to use um, within your organizations where your users go straight out to the public cloud from that edge of the network, from an enterprise branch. 
And do you have all the visibility today? In some cases, some, some of the folks on this webinar might say, yes, we do. But then I'm sure, at least the end users we talk to, there are holes in you know, that end-to-end -end visibility today. So any and all tools, uh, I don't think any one solution can do it. It has to be a multi-pronged approach to get additional visibility, which ultimately will lead to additional network intelligence. Excellent. Well, we're at the top of the hour, uh, so I want to thank everybody for their time and effort. Rohit, Paul, thank you again for providing your very valuable perspective. And it, on the screen are also some additional resources uh, if you want to reach out to us. Um, and we will follow up after this call with a copy of this presentation and a link to all of these additional resources. Thank you, everybody, for your time, and uh, have a good rest of your day.